University of South Carolina game clock. Stephen Orr Spurrier, who has coached a national championship team, won seven Southeastern Conference titles, and won nearly 78% of the college games he has coached in, was introduced as Carolina's 32nd head coach on November 23, 2004, before an Overflow News Conference crowd in the south end zone of williams Bryce Stadium. I truly believe that uh, winning the SEC is an achievable goal for the University of South Carolina. I really do. And uh, we're going to try to do it. Uh, every year, every time we have a team that's capable. I know that's easy to say. I know it's not going to be easy. I know we got uh, some of the strongest teams in the nation in our division. Uh, Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, obviously very good teams that uh, we need to start beating soon. The much-anticipated 2005 season got underway under the national spotlight. ESPN's game day crew was on hand for the opening of the Steve Spurrier era at Carolina as the Gamecocks hosted Central Florida on Thursday, September 1st. Fans got an early taste of a Spurrier-led offense when Blake Mitchell connected with Noah Whiteside for a 49-yard touchdown pass on the first offensive series of the season. Now it's first down and 10 right just inside the territory of Central Florida. High formation, Mitchell drops deep back to the 40, throws one down the middle. Got a man there, Noah Whiteside, cut it to 10, touchdown Carolina, touchdown Noah Whiteside. Mitchell in the shotgun, two wide receivers left side. Central Florida showing some pressure. They bring it. Mitchell sets up the screen, drops it off to Davis at the 25. Got a blocker, 30, 40, 50. Can Davis run inside the 30, 25, 20. He set the 10, 5, and finally knocked out of bounds. Two wide receivers. Clark comes in motion, offset eye in the backfield. Mitchell, play action, drops back deep, throws to Andy Boyd at the 8. Going to knock himself in. Touchdown, Carolina. Touchdown, Andy Boyd on a crossing route. 11 yards on the game. And Carolina puts another six on Central Florida. Mitchell under center this time. Two wide receivers. He fakes it, throws wide receiver screen to Newton. Newton got some room. Gets a block from Clark. Inside the 15, 10, 5. Savelle Newton. Touchdown, Carolina. Touchdown, Savelle Newton. The Gamecocks built a 24-3 lead through three quarters, then held off a late charge by the Golden Knights to post a 24-15 win. It was the 15th season opening win in 16 tries for Coach Spurrier, with his only loss coming when he was coaching at Duke to the Todd Ellis-led Gamecocks in 1989. The 2005 Southeastern Conference opener came in Athens against the ninth-ranked Georgia Bulldogs on September 10th. ESPN cameras were on hand again as the two teams waged a defensive battle. Jonathan Joseph intercepted a DJ Shockley pass early in the second quarter and returned it 42 yards for a touchdown. Two wide receivers on the left side. Shockley really taking his time. Now steps up, takes a snap, looking down the field, right into the sunlight. Goes. Coach Simpson in and out of his hands. Caught. Intercepted by Jonathan Joseph. Inside the 30. Makes the cut. 20. 10. Trying to get to the corner. Dives. Give it to Touchdown. him. Touchdown. Yes. Touchdown, Carolina. Touchdown, Jonathan Joseph. J.J. on a 38-yard interception return. And the Gamecocks with an extra point will tie it up. Josh Brown missed the extra point, which would prove to be crucial. With the Bulldogs on top 17-9 midway through the fourth quarter, Blake Mitchell found Sidney Rice in the end zone for a four-yard touchdown pass. Mitchell looking very poised. Same set. Turning in the backfield this time. Four wide receivers from the four. Mitchell under center, drops back three steps again. Looking, looking now under pressure. Throws late, complete. Touchdown catch. Touchdown Carolina. Touchdown Sidney Rice. Oh my goodness. The Gamecocks could go for two and tie it up here in Athens, Georgia. The potential game-tying two-point conversion fell incomplete. It appeared the Gamecocks were going to get one final opportunity to win the game, but Shockley completed a 27-yard pass on a third and 22 situation from his own eight-yard line, and Georgia was able to survive in a 17-15 decision. And Coach Spurrier just said, uh, you know, we got to forget about it and move ahead, and um, that's what we did. So that was, a, that, was a, that, that was kind of a good thing that happened to us early in the season. Um, now looking back, you know, it was very, very tough to swallow um, right after that, especially me. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, you know, who knew to come find out later on that, you know, I'd get a chance to redeem myself. I bet it was a game that we had our chances. You know, we had a touchdown call back, had to kick a field goal. We missed an extra point. We missed a two-point play. Blake had some pressure on him and overthrew Sydney. 
and we lost by two points. So uh, all we can do is uh, say, hey, we didn't, we didn't play well enough or efficiently enough to, to quite get it done. And, uh, but, you know, we scared them. And, uh, you know, the Georgia people thought they were going to clobber us. You know, most of their fans did. They th said, we're going we're gonna to show these guys how to play football. But our guys hung in there, and, and we had a chance, but we didn't quite get it done. Uh, but we're not complaining because we won uh, certainly our share of the close games this year. And we just wanted to go out there and just still let the world know that we were a good team. You know, things just didn't go our way. But we came out and, you know, played pretty well. And we just wanted to come back and try to bounce back, you know, the next week and from there on. Carolina returned home the next week to face the 2-0 Alabama Crimson Tide. For the third straight week, a national television audience tuned in, this time on CBS. The Gamecocks were looking for their third straight win in the series over Alabama after losing each of the first 10 matchups. But it was not to be as the Crimson Tide broke an early 7-7 tie with 30 unanswered points en route to a 37-14 victory. The Gamecocks stepped out of conference the next week by hosting the Troy Trojans out of the Sun Belt Conference. The Gamecocks had little trouble in winning their 11th straight game over a school from a non-BCS conference. In their biggest offensive explosion of the season, USC rolled up a 45-20 win. Mitchell back under center, two wide receivers left side. They want to go flea flicker. Mitchell throws an out route to Savelle Newton, caught at the 17, makes one cut. He's running for it, inside the five. Give it to him. Touchdown, Carolina. Touchdown, Savelle Newton. 36 yards on a good-looking play. Mitchell gets under center, offset eye. Troy showing some pressure. They're going to try to bring it off the left side. They do so. Mitchell throwing. Good pickup. Looking, looking, looking. Under pressure. At the 20. Rolls right. Throws in the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Carolina. Guess who? Touchdown, Sidney Rice. The Gamecock defense forced five turnovers, including Brandon Isaac's 11-yard return of a fumble for a touchdown. First and 10 at his own 25. He'll hand off. And that's another fumble. The ball's on the ground. Into Gamecock hands. Picked up and run into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. Touchdown, Brandon Isaac. Oh, my goodness. USC quarterbacks Blake Mitchell and Antonio Hefner combined to hit on 17 of 23 passes for 268 yards and three touchdowns. Playing without the services of quarterback Blake Mitchell, who was sidelined with a high ankle sprain, the Gamecocks traveled to Auburn on October 1st and were handed their worst loss of the season, a 48-7 setback. The USC offense did not cross midfield until Antonio Hefner connected with Sidney Rice on a 45-yard touchdown pass midway through the fourth quarter as the Gamecocks avoided the shutout. Coach Spurrier came to us and let us know that we need to play better. We need to play like the Floridas, the Georgias, the Auburns, the Alabamas. We need to play faster. We need to play harder. We need to play meaner. And essentially, that's what we did before we went on our five-game winning streak. And that's what we need to continue to do from now on, just play like those top teams and believe that we're a top team. The Gamecocks were 0-3 in SEC play when they hosted the Kentucky Wildcats on October 8th, needing a win to gain some confidence. The teams battled to a 10-10 tie at halftime, but with the help of numerous Kentucky turnovers, Carolina put 34 second-half points on the board and ran away with a 44-16 decision. Mitchell goes first and 10 at the Kentucky 27. He'll play action this time. Looking left side, pump fake, throws into the end zone. Got a man there, caught Sidney Rice. No flag, touchdown Carolina. Touchdown Sidney Rice. One back in the backfield is Terman. Quick drop, fade route again. Sidney Rice there, caught. Touchdown Carolina. Touchdown Sidney Rice. Eight yards in the second touchdown on the day for number four. Coe Simpson had a huge game, figuring in on 13 tackles, intercepting a pass, and returning a fumble 19 yards for a touchdown but it's the bunch formation to the right side. Three wide receivers, little alone back. Carolina lined up, here comes pressure. Tall sweep right side, fumbled again, but he recovers it, does little. No, it's still on the ground, picked up. That's Coach Simpson, five, four, touchdown. Touchdown, Carolina. Touchdown, Coach Simpson. Coach Simpson was named the league's defensive player of the week. You know, we're starting to play some teams we can play with. Kentucky. We're, we're as good as Kentucky now. We will file that Auburn game. It's history. They're better than us right now. Hopefully next year or the year after we'll be as, to where we can play with uh, the Auburns and Alabamas. So uh, uh, and, and then the Kentucky game was a close game for the half. And then the second half they fumbled a few to us and 
and we went on a, a nice uh, scoring binge there and, and got that game uh, 44 to 16. After enjoying an off week, the Gamecocks hosted the vastly improved Vanderbilt Commodores on October 22nd. In what turned out to be the best shootout of the season, Carolina came away with a hard-fought 35-28 victory. Redshirt freshman Sidney Rice had his coming out party, catching eight passes for 132 yards and three touchdowns. Terman and Newton in the game. Newton splits out wide left. Throw to the corner, though, and Sidney Rice is there. Caught. Touchdown. Sidney Rice, 16 yards, and he breaks a record. Six straight games to start his career where he has caught a touchdown. Mitchell, second down and 10 at the Vandy 11. Terman alone back in the backfield. Newton splits out left side this time. They'll run wide receiver screen to him. He's going to throw it in the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Carolina. Touchdown, Carson Askins. What can't he do? What can he not do? 11-yard touchdown pass from Savelle Newton. Second down and nine for Savelle. They snap it back to him. He stays in the shotgun. He wants to throw it. Now he wants to run. No, he pulls up, throws to Sidney Rice. Caught at the 15, inside the 10, five. He reaches for it. Give it to him. Touchdown, Carolina. Touchdown, Sidney Rice. Blake Mitchell will come out with Savelle Newton in the backfield behind him, the lone back. Third down and seven. He's hands off to Newton, right side, cutting his way forward. Inside the five, spins away again. Three, two, one, dies for it. Touchdown, Carolina. Touchdown, Savelle Newton. That was a fun game. That's uh, sort of interesting. I, of course, I always sort of tell our guys it's going to be a tough physical game going into the fourth quarter because that's the way you want to mentally prepare you guys. And, uh, and sure enough, that's uh, exactly what happened today. And it was sort of, I think, neat in a way that uh, our guys drove down and score uh, with the game tied to win it, and uh, our defense held on there to end uh, to preserve it. But, uh, you know, what a performance by Savelle Newton. And uh, sad, uh, somehow or another, he, uh, they think he tore his Achilles on that play. And, uh, I mean, when he went in, you, you couldn't hardly see anything, but something, something just barely snapped, they said. But they can repair those, and uh, hopefully he'll come back 100% next year. But that was uh, about as good an individual performance uh, by – a football player that, I, that I've seen in a long time, he had uh, 80 yards rushing and three out of four for two touchdown passes. So there was uh, some performance by Savelle. Tennessee fans across the country had their worst fears realized when old nemesis Steve Spurrier brought his Gamecocks to Knoxville to take on Philip Fulmer's nationally ranked volunteers on October 29th. Center, two wide receivers, right side. Mitchell drops back, quick play, pump fakes, throws to Sidney Rice, up, in. Touchdown! Touchdown, Carolina! Touchdown, Sidney Rice on a jump pass, and Carolina with the extra point will go up 14 to 12. Josh Brown was the hero of the night with his career-best 49-yard field goal, barely clearing the crossbar with just 2.45 remaining. Brown going to set it up on the right hash mark. Snap it back to him. Set it down. Kick it up. Strong kick. Headed towards it. It's good. It's good. It's good. Josh Brown with a 49-yard field goal. And Carolina goes up on Tennessee. Oh, my goodness. 16-15's the score. I can't believe it. Josh Brown, 49 yards. A career long. Takes Foster and Anderson in the backfield. Brings a man in motion. Drops back five steps. Throws underneath. Incomplete. Incomplete. That's Carolina football in a fourth and five. They don't get it. And knocked away that time by Coach Simpson. A staunch Carolina defense held the balls to just three second half points, and the Gamecocks came away with a 16-15 victory on a night when Peyton Manning's jersey was retired. Spurrier and his squad left Knoxville with a win, something no other Carolina team had ever achieved. How do you rate this game in your uh, short South Carolina career so far? Where does it rank? Uh, it's the number one game of all time. The best one. What makes it so special to you? Just to come out here and be able to help my teammates win a big game like this. Coach Spurrier said to me, you know, the week before and actually right before the game, he said, you know, it might come down to a uh, winning field goal. And uh, he said, just be ready. So I said, yes, sir, I sure will be. And, uh, you know, I, I, as soon as Tennessee got the ball, or as soon as we got the ball back and I kind of figured it out and, and uh, we scored and then Tennessee came back and scored, I said, 
this can be won by field goal. So right then, I think I was about the fourth quarter that, um, that I started putting my mind set to, to go out and win the game. Um, and, uh, you know, we didn't get as, as close as we'd like, um, but uh, that's just the way it fell. And uh, all the glory goes to God for all that. And uh, it's just um, it was one of those things that a uh, kicker looks forward to uh, when the game is on the line and you go out there and you perform and you succeed. We talked all week about trying to make some history that South Carolina never won there. And I, I reminisced a little bit about taking some Duke teams in there that upset Tennessee back in uh, 82 and 88, uh, we went in there and won a uh, couple of games. So I knew it, it was a possibility uh, for it to happen. We had to get some good bounces and some good breaks. And certainly uh, their guy fumbling into the end zone, uh, they dropped a long pass down the middle. A lot of good fortune happened for us, as you know. And, uh, and then Josh makes a 49-yard field goal. So it was uh, – Sydney had a couple touchdown grabs, and uh, we played about as well as we could. And, and they didn't play their best, and, and we beat them. And that's, that's how it had to happen, and our guys were ready for that to happen, and fortunately, it, it worked out that way. The suddenly streaking Gamecocks had little time to enjoy the Tennessee win as they traveled to Fayetteville to face the top rushing team in the conference in Arkansas on November 5th. The Carolina defense gave up some yards between the 20s, but a goal line stand late in the first half and another red zone stop late in the game proved to be the difference. Sidney Rice scored on a touchdown pass in the first quarter, his school record 12th touchdown catch of the season, extending his school record streak to eight straight games with a touchdown reception. Second down and 22, the ball at the 43 of Arkansas. Casey Dick will go play action, set up the screen, right side. That's picked off by Oris Lambert. Oris read it. Oris brings it down. Turnover, Carolina. Oh, my goodness. Mitchell under center. Behind him, it's offset. He'll play action. Got good protection. Wants to go down to Kenny McKinley. They've got him at the 12. 10, 5, touchdown, Carolina. Touchdown, Kenny McKinley. Boom, boom, turnover, touchdown, 42 yards. One of the most anticipated showdowns was next on the docket as Carolina hosted the 12th-ranked Florida Gators at williams Bryce Stadium on November 12th. All eyes were focused on Gamecocks coach Steve Spurrier, who won the Heisman Trophy as a player at Florida and led his alma mater to a national championship. An early 48-yard interception returned by defensive tackle Chris Tucker set up the game's first score and gave Carolina some early momentum. Leak in the shotgun. Carolina got a bunch of guys up front. Leak, plenty of time. Steps up the middle. Batted up in the air. Intercepted. Intercepted Carolina. Still on his feet across the 50. Chris Tucker. 40. 35. 30. Got some blockers. 20. Still on his feet. Down to the 10. Five knocked out of bounds. Oh my goodness, what a return. I don't believe it, 47 yards. With Blake Mitchell completing just seven passes on the day, the Gamecocks turned to the running game and got two touchdowns each from Mike Davis and Dacus Terman. Mitchell under center, tall sweep left side to Davis. Davis trying to get to the corner. 10, five, dives for the goal line. He's got it, touchdown Carolina. Touchdown, Mike Davis, five yards on a leaping touchdown. And Carolina puts six on the board. At eye formation, handoff left side to Terman. No run, he gets even touches him. Touchdown, Carolina. Touchdown, Dacus Terman. A one-yard run, and Carolina puts another six on the board. Look at that fan. Look at those fans over there in the student section. After the Gamecocks opened a 20-3 lead, the Gators rallied to within one. But Mitchell found Sidney Rice, who after breaking a couple of tackles, rambled down the sidelines to the one-yard line in a game-changing performance. Mitchell barks one out, now looks to Coach Spurrier, who's standing right at the 37. He'll check it off, motions out to Chris Clark. Clock down to one, they get it off. Throws a fade route out there to Sidney Rice, caught. Sidney breaks the tackle, 50, 40, 30, 20, foot race, 10. They knock him down at the one. Oh my goodness. Sidney Rice comes up big again, but he's caught at the one. 64 yards. The 30 to 22 win was Carolina's school record fifth straight SEC victory and moved them into the national rankings for the first time all season. I mean, I think a lot of people kind of doubted us. Uh, didn't think we could do what we've done. I mean, but we knew that we could do it, and uh, we knew if we could keep ourselves in some ball games, and we had a chance to win. After the game, the fans were like still here, and like we were like trying to figure out like 
wow, they, they're still here sitting here, you know. But it was a great win, you know, that knowing that Coach Ferrier came from, from uh, Florida and, you know, um, and that he can defeat them in his first year here at, at South Carolina, you know, it was, it was a great feeling. Just winning just is just this ultimate goal, you know, it's just something that you, it's hard to put in words. You just appreciate it and you just, you're going to remember the rest of your life when you come back with your kids and everyone and talk about the, the Tennessee and the Florida game we won and, and all the other games we won, just putting together a nice season, you know. We wish we could have did more, but we know we got room to improve and I, I can't wait to come back and watch those guys. You know, we enjoyed the victory and uh, it's history now and uh, we don't, have to worry about not beating them since 1939. That's in the history books, but uh, I think it was special for our fans. Uh, so many of them, uh, I think, even said, I didn't know that I'd live to see this day that we finally beat Florida. The Gamecocks took their 7 and 3 record into the traditional season ending game against in state rival Clemson on November 19th. In one of the toughest tickets to come by in the series in recent memory, the teams waged a defensive battle with neither team breaking the goal line during the first three quarters. Josh Brown booted a career-high three field goals for the Gamecocks, who held a 9-6 advantage until the Tigers finally reached pay dirt midway through the fourth quarter. They held on to win 13-9. It was the fewest points scored in the series since the Gamecocks won by an identical 13-9 score in 1979. <laughs> who would have known that we would have won uh, seven games and, and uh, go to a bowl game? So uh, uh, it's, it's been just a... A year to look back on and I think that's the most Coach Spurrier has, uh, has uh, talked about through the year is you know when you guys get together five ten years down the road you want to you want to sit around and talk about man remember that play against Florida we just beat them man y'all remember that game against Tennessee uh, you know just those those memories that we shared now of uh, those seven games that we won it's just nobody can take that away from us well, I most liked uh, our team's ability to just sort of keep on playing. You know, uh, when things went bad, we didn't pout, we didn't hang our heads, we just kept on playing, and that's how we won seven games. Uh, I th someone told me I think we played seven games that might could have gone either way, and we won five of those seven. Uh, a couple of games uh, we won fairly good scores. So. Uh, and then we lost a couple of close ones that we could have. Georgia and Clemson were two that could have gone either way also. But to win five of the seven close ones, that, that means you guys have hung in there and kept playing all the way through the game. So I think that's what we're most proud is the, the attitude uh, that our players brought to the stadium and, and played with throughout the season. You know, we just came together, you know, and just calmed down and just, I mean, we was already learning our assignments, but it was just like the timing was off. We just doing stuff at the wrong time. And, but we, we got it all together. And, you know, obviously we won five games in a row, and um, we just, for every game, we just took it from there, just had fun, just having a good time out there on the field. Uh, the fans are something else. I mean, to, cons to consistently have 80,000 people screaming and yelling, and it's almost crazy. You know, you sit, you look up there, and my mom and my grandfather, they've never been on the 80,000. <laughs> I've been on, I played on it all my, like, last four or five years, so. The senior night, I mean, I almost started crying because they cried next to me. I'm telling you, I got to stop crying. I got a game to play. I got to play against Clemson, the best, you know, the hardest game of the year. And they next to me crying. I'm like, what y'all crying about? They're like, it's 80,000 people looking at me. I'm like, I'm used to it now. Get a, get a, get a grip. You know, I got to play. But it's great. Uh, I mean, they're always screaming. And we had some down times, but the great times overshadow all those down times. And, oh, uh, man, it's, it's hard to explain because you're never going to have 80,000 people screaming for you again in life. And, you just got to cherish those moments, and I definitely have. Oh, certainly. This year has been uh, wonderful. Uh, the big victories we've had this year has made it all worthwhile. Uh, but, again, we're, we're looking toward the future, and, and recruiting is so essential to our success. If we can get uh, the caliber players that Georgia and Florida and Tennessee have been recruiting, I certainly believe we, we've got an excellent chance to, to win us a championship here. So we're in on a lot of good players. We've got some wonderful commitments already. And uh, the key is recruiting at a very high level year in and year out.